Kira and welcome to another episode of Influencers at LU, a video podcast series brought to you by Lincoln University's Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce with me, Hafsa. This week, uh, I have uh, David Dean with me and our topic for discussion will be why people buy the food they buy. So a brief introduction of my guest today is um, David Dean is an Associate Professor of Marketing uh, head and head of department of the agribusiness and markets department. His research interests are in marketing of experiential products, food and wine and services, creative tourism, hospitality and emerging food services, and the development of analytics for measuring and analyzing social media interactions. In the food arena, he has recently looked at food-related lifestyles, wine brands influence in purchase sustainability attitudes in seafood consumption, loyalty drivers in halal cosmetics, and what makes a productive restaurant employee. Welcome, David. Thanks, Hafsa. Glad to be here. <clears throat> so my first question to you, David, is tell us why do people buy the food they buy? Well, um, it's a complicated issue because uh, experiential products like food, um, they involve um, sort of an immersive, not only individual, but also cultural, national, all kinds of uh, complicated factors which drive us to the food purchases that we make. Many of us purchase foods because not just why we like them, but also the foods that we grew up with, what our parents fixed us, and also what we our capabilities of cooking. So we um, are likely to be influenced by a whole number of factors when we walk into a either prepackaged foods in a restaurant um, or pre-prepared foods or when we're buying uh, raw material foods in a supermarket. So it's a really complicated issue. So we can only really look at small facets of that issue at any given time. Right. Thank you, David. You definitely make it sound really complicated. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and it, it's great that you mentioned the idea that your ability to cook, which, is, which will be very interesting to look at as a factor. So mm. and, and this is great because we really want to know that it's not an easy decision about purchasing food. So could you share more details about what influences our food purchasing? Well, uh, let me talk about a, a project that I'm involved in right now, which is called the um, Modular Food Related Lifestyles Project. And this was a project that, um, it's a sort of an update of a um, project that was started in the 1990s, early 1990s by a couple of Danish researchers. And um, back then, uh, Karen Brunso and Klaus Grunert, they decided that they wanted to look at um, food purchasing consumption from a food production chain, but not like a, a value chain in a traditional sense or, a, or a, a, a macro sense. It's looking at the food chain from the moment that we decide what we're going to um, serve at home to then we need to buy the raw materials, we need to cook the food, we need to prepare, um, present the food, and then we need to consume it. And so it's really looking at a, a, a microcosm of how we make uh, our, our own food. Um, and various uh, degrees of um, uh, preparation that we do or that we have pre-prepared. And they looked at this in the 1990s and um, I was involved um, in this project lately because they've updated that and they wanted to include other aspects that, um, uh, well, have changed. The fact that we might take smart um, uh, devices in with our shopping, that we might be influenced by other things, that now we have social media and cooking shows and all kinds of other things which have changed, which are influencing all of us in the way that we um, purchase, prepare, and consume our food. So I got involved because they said, David, we'd like to collect some data with this new, improved, modular food-related lifestyle in New Zealand. I said, I'm in New Zealand. I'll do that part. And I've joined this uh, team of people from uh, Denmark, Hungary, Australia, United States, UK, and now uh, New Zealand to look at how um, people choose their their foods in a in more of a personal food preparation chain sense. Mm. Thank you, David. Um, I definitely didn't think that food purchasing had so much involved in terms of uh, 
requiring a so much extensive study. So just because you mentioned that you have been uh, part of it from a New Zealand perspective, what was special about uh, food purchasing in New Zealand? And did we have any similarities to other countries? Yeah, well, this, this um, I guess the recent research that we've done in this area has been looking at um, something which we call sort of responsible food consumer. And the idea is that um, what do people think about in terms of their food purchasing decisions uh, in a, a responsibility sense? Now, this responsibility um, was really looking at um, aspects of how our food impacts, uh, our food choices impact the environment, um, were the, was the food produced in a sustainable way, um, what about the conditions under which the food was um, uh, raised or grown or produced or processed, um, is there any sort of um, condition aspects that we're, we're interested in when we make these decisions. And, and what we found is that um, typically from the groups that we were looking at, um, Denmark, Hungary, Australia, US, UK, New Zealand, the, the, the Australia, US, UK, New Zealand were similar in terms of the way we looked at things. And then the European, co continental Europeans looked at things a little bit differently. We found that um, for the continental Europeans, they were um, much more traditional, um, and they were making purchases largely, oh, there's a much higher percentage of people which would be considered conservative or were serving food that their parents served. Um, whereas in the, um, the, the sort of new countries, the Australia, New Zealand, UK, and NZ, depending on how you characterize them, sort of um, UK and its ex-colonies, um, that they, they were looking at um, sort of similar outlook in terms of their environmental concern. Although New Zealand definitely had some, some slight differences. In fact, I think New Zealand had the highest um, responses on the, the environmental impact of our, our eating habits. So New Zealanders were more concerned about um, the environmental impact of their food choices than were all, all the other countries in the study. So that was an interesting finding. Mm. So, and, and that's good to know because then that highlights that as New Zealanders, we are more responsible consumers by, and then you start to look at those factors. So uh, uh, I guess the next question is in, uh, when we start to look at these behaviors in New Zealand, is there an opportunity we could explore which we have not yet with regards to purchasing here in New Zealand? Well, I, I think there is. The, the, the thing is that when, when we purchase, um, I mean, Let's just let's just assume that when New Zealanders go to their supermarket, they they automatically assume that the food which is going to be available to them is safe. Mm. So there's a trust that um, if this was not safe food for us to eat, we would not be able to buy it. It would not be available for sale. And this is not the same in other other countries. We may be able to go into places and buy things that, in fact. They may not be safe or they may be detrimental to our health in the long run. But in New Zealand, we sort of feel that there's a trust that the government system is going to help. But the, the, the real question that, that we, we would like to explore is, is where else does our trust lie? So when I go into um, a supermarket and go to the fish counter, I'm, I have to, to work out, is my trust basically that the government is going to let only um, nutritious fish products be sold to me? Or do I trust the person who's actually behind the counter? Or do I trust the retailer? Or do I trust the brand? Uh, and so I think this is where we really need to look, um, is, is where do we look for in our purchasing uh, habits for the trust? And I guess we need to look from a, from a, a, a bigger picture, do these people deserve our trust or do they really have our, our best interests at heart? And um, if we're trying to increase the um, trustworthiness of our brands, where are consumers looking for it that we need to make those players in our food production, our own personal food production food chain, uh, who do we need to get on side to make sure that um, the consumer is getting the information from the people that they most trust. So I guess that's the, that's the future is to, to, 
dive deeper into this process to get more information about um, when and where the people are making decisions and who are the consumers trusting. Mm, because that 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 uh, that leaves us with a lot of questions, and obviously there is more uh, more research and evidence that people like you would be doing to tell us what matters when we buy our food. So it, it was definitely a very insightful discussion, David, for um, for letting us know that just buying our food is not a simple choice. That we do have a lot of other factors that that impact that. So thank you very much, David. Uh, I really appreciate your time today and those insights that you've given us. Thanks, Hafsa. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you. All and right. thanks for the opportunity to talk about my research. You're welcome. So, and, uh, and to our viewers, if you wish to connect with David and find out more about his research, uh, the details are available on Lincoln University's uh, website under staff profile. So you can go ahead and read more about David and you can contact him through those details. And as for me, I will be back with more um, experts to have a discussion. However, if you do wish to leave any comments or suggestions, uh, feel free to email me at hafsa.m at lincoln.ac.nz or you can also message me on my LinkedIn profile. Kakitiano and a goodbye.